Here's your weekly look at what is happening at Move Church. Give thanks. Sunday, November 27th, we will meet here at 9 a.m. and serve our city and surrounding areas with many different projects. We will finish by 1 p.m. This is going to be a blessing to many and you will be blessed being a part. Sign up today for a serve group at the table in the back of the sanctuary. Food drive for Deliver Me Ministries. Deliver Me is a ministry that provides food to the elderly in Jackson. We will be collecting cans and dry food products through December 11th to help fill their shelves for the Christmas holiday. Movers Christmas Party will be Sunday, December 18th from 5 to 7 p.m. It will be at the Pearl Parks and Recreation Building. We are looking forward to a fun evening together. Water Baptism. Today following the second service, we will celebrate with those who have committed to following Christ. There are four ways to give here at Move Church. You can give with the Tithely app or on our website at movechurch.com. Mail in your tithe offering or other contributions to our P.O. Box or on the back of the church in the giving box. Thank you and prepare for worship. Good morning, Move Church. If y'all will stand while we praise the Lord.
Lord, we come to you today. Lord, we thank you for your presence. Lord, we acknowledge your spirit in this place this morning. We invite you in this building this morning, God. We invite you into the homes of the people watching online. Lord, we want to thank you for what you're doing and what you're going to do in this place this morning. In your heavenly name we pray. Amen. Guys, let's take just a few moments. If you have... Um, have something to fill out in your giving envelope so we can drop those in the back in the giving box and a uh, time for meet and greet. This is my firm foundation.
I've still got joy in chaos I've got peace that makes no sense So I won't be going under I'm not held by my own strength Cause I built my life on Jesus Cause he's sing that verse again I've still got joy in chaos I've got peace that makes no sense so I won't be going under I'm not held by my own strength amen and I've still got joy in chaos I've got peace that makes no sense so I won't be
we thank you so much for today. That you would come and meet us in this place. You are such a good, good father. We ask that you would speak. God, that you would change hearts, that you would change lives this morning. We welcome you. church he's worthy
Come on, there's power in the name of Jesus. presence of the Lord is ushered in this place. We're going to, if you would sing that again, I know we've sang it a few times, but I think this is pleasing heaven. And as Abigail was singing, what makes, uh, I, I just, I just couldn't imagine the angels being quiet to hear the song. Then I imagine the angels just joining in to the song that we're singing. And uh, isn't he worthy? Come on, we're going to sing this song one more time. And I, maybe you have had a rough week. I understand that. Maybe you have a lot weighing on you today. I just encourage you to forget it all. Go ahead and lift it up to Jesus. Leave it there and praise him for his goodness today in your life. Declare his goodness over your life. As we sing this song, let's join the angels in heaven. Let's sing it loud. Let's sing with freedom. And let's worship him one more time as she sings this.
every head bowed in this place. Lord, we thank you for today. Lord, we thank you for meeting us here in this moment of worship. Lord, we thank you for reminding us of how sweet your presence is. Lord, we ask that your kingdom come and that your will be done. And Lord, we ask that your kingdom come into our lives, that your kingdom come into this worship place this morning. Lord, that your kingdom come into our relationships, into our marriages, into every aspect of our lives. Lord, that you and your kingdom come into our lives this morning. Lord, we ask that your presence and your spirit stay with us in this place. Lord, we ask that you bless us this morning. God, we ask that you fill each and every pew, each and every heart this morning. God, we ask that you and your divine intervention intervene for our behalf today. Lord, it is not by our will, it is not by our strength, it is not by our will that your kingdom come, but by yours and yours alone. Lord, we thank you for that, and we thank you for your presence. In your heavenly name we pray. Amen. Guys, we're glad that you're with us here at Move Church today. You can be seated. If you're watching online, we welcome you for tuning in. Thank you for that, but we want to see you in church. We want you to experience the power of community here at Move Church. Um, first time guests, we welcome you here. Can we give our uh, first time guests a round of applause this morning? We hope you felt welcome as you walked in the place this morning. We're glad that you're with us. But um, Just one announcement, the youth frequency students will be going bowling today at four o'clock. So if that is something you're interested in, and if you know anyone with a youth age student, please see Kelly or Miss Crystal after service today. But before Brother Bobby comes, before we get our message started, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for today, and Lord, we thank you for our pastor. We thank you for Brother Bobby. Lord, we thank you for the heart that you've placed inside of him. God, we lift him up to you. Lord, we ask that you bless him. God, put his dependence upon you and you alone, for it is upon you that he is here to deliver this message. Lord, open our hearts to receive what you have intended for us to receive this morning. God, we thank you for your divine intervention in this place this morning. In your heavenly name we pray. Amen. Okay, I know it's early in the morning, but would you stand up on your feet one more time and let's lift a praise to the Lord, thanking him for all he's done for us. Come on, open up your mouths, let it out, celebrate his goodness. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your goodness in our lives. We lift you up and we thank you for all that you are and what you're going to do in our lives today. Come on, let's shout amen. Amen. Do we have a battery problem with this one? They're going to maybe switch me out with a different mic. Maybe. We'll see. Am I good on this one? Boy, I think I can sing on this one. Maybe that's what I've been... Needing. Thank you, Angie, for that. Okay, just uh, want to make a couple of quick announcements. After the second service today, we will have water baptism, and I uh, have three people that are going to be baptized in water, and if you want to stay around and celebrate, it's going to be great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so that will be following the, the second service. And next Sunday, we're not going to meet in the house to have church. We're going to be having church at about six different locations all over. It's called Give Thanks, and we're going to meet here at 9 o'clock, and we're going to go out in teams ministering all over the city and surrounding areas. There are six different teams that you can sign up for. They're on the table at the back of the foyer. I would encourage you to sign up and come and be a part. Just to give you an example of those teams, there's a benevolent care team that Becky will be leading, will be delivering turkeys to, to elderly in Jackson. This year, they were not going to get a turkey from this ministry that they normally do for their Christmas meal. Well, we're going to help out with that. We're going to uh, hopefully, um, we're going to have at least 20 turkeys that we're going to take out to different homes in, in the Jackson area to elderly who really need it. If you want to donate a turkey, uh, please do that, buy one, bring it here Friday at 10 o'clock. Friday at 10 o'clock, Miss Sharon Hartfield will lead, meet us here, who's over that ministry. That way she can take it to her freezers and we'll have it for Sunday. So many of you have asked about donating a turkey, please do so. But Friday at 10 o'clock, meet us right here 
and that way we can get them to a freezer and get them uh, to the right place for us to have on Sunday. So that's Benevolent Care Team led by Becky Osborne. Cleaning and Organizing Team. How many of you can need that team at your house? This is a real need, though, of, of, a, of a lady. Marlis is going to be leading this up. And um, so we're going to be going just helping her go through. She's an elderly lady, not able to do many of this, of these things. So it's going to be a big help to her. So that'll be uh, the cleaning, organizing team. Prayer and invite team is going to be led by Joel. And uh, that's going to be an awesome team. We're going to go out through the businesses in the surrounding area. giving out. We were given cases, thanks to, to Mesa for her uh, telling uh, others about what we're doing. We're going to be giving out um, bottles of hand sanitizer, a little gift with a little note that says, who may ascend the hill of the Lord? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, right? And invite him to church, and we're going to be praying over them. And the rest of the cases go to Sharon Hartfield's Deliver Me ministry. She says she just ran out of hand sanitizer for her people. So that was just a God thing. And so that's the prayer and invite team. They're going to pray for people. It's going to be a good time. Appreciation team led by Pam Ivey. They're going to be doing cookies to the police and fire department. So if you can make cookies, uh, good cookies, um, <laughs> if you can't buy you some cookies, and come and be a part of that team. We're going to go out and just bless those first responders that day. Construction team is led by Kelly. They're going to be building a handicapped, handicapped ramp uh, for a lady. Just uh, It's going to be a, a wonderful time there. So, guys, if you can build and you got some tools, sign up for that team. And there's a landscaping team that's going to be led by uh, Tim. And that's going to be digging some drainage ditches for a house. That really needs help that it actually floods sometimes when the rains are heavy. We want to help take care of that. So all of this is going to be going on Sunday at 9 o'clock. Please sign up for a team. Come and be a part. You will be more blessed than the blessing uh, that you will be. Uh, it's called Give Thanks. We're going to give people reasons to be thankful this season. Amen? So sign up today. Please go ahead and put your name and phone number down so they can contact you during this week to give you more information. Okay, the Psalms are, are some of my favorite readings. I always get encouragement, and this one verse speaks to us during this season, but I believe it's, it's going to speak to us more than just because it's the Thanksgiving season. God's got something to say to us today. It's been in my heart all week. Psalms 100 verse 4. We welcome everybody watching online. Would you help me welcome them? Please give it up for them. We got so many people out with the flu today. And uh, hopefully you're able to watch online and, and receive today. It says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Abigail, you've done such an awesome job. And I really felt like... Uh, your, your gifting, it felt like if I closed, when I closed my eyes, I thought this is what the angels would sound like, singing. And what made it so beautiful, your offering, is your heart that matches that. Don't let Satan talk you out of that. What, what God can do through you with your gifting and your heart, you will be amazed and nothing the world can offer you will ever compare. Please just remember that, okay? Thank you for that. So I think the, the psalmist is giving us more than instructions on how to worship. Thanksgiving and praise is so important. But I think also from my experience, my proven experience, it's revelation knowledge too, that when we Begin with thanksgiving, being thankful, and we, uh, thanksgiving goes right into praise, and we start with thanking the Lord, and then we praise him. We're going to talk about it today, thanksgiving and praise, but it ushers us into his presence, and it's so crucial for you and I to be able to go into his presence. Today, the message is titled, The Pathway to His Presence. Can we pray? Lord, I thank you today for every person here. 
Lord, I know that you're going to speak to our hearts. Your presence is already in this room. We thank you for that. We don't take it for granted. We say, Lord, have your way. Those watching online, Lord, I pray that you would fill their homes with your presence. Touch those that are sick today. Heal their bodies. Let them feel your presence wash over them. And we thank you. We know that's your desire. The church, let's pray it together. Lord, speak to my heart. Change my life in Jesus' name. No other religion or belief has what Christianity has. We are allowed to experience the presence of the God we worship. Other religions, they do extreme things to try to get their God's favor. Our God did extreme things because we have his favor. And he allows us to actually experience his very presence in the sin-stained bodies. Isn't that amazing? That God Almighty loves us enough that he would not only make a way for us to come and approach him, but he would allow us to actually feel his presence at times when we do. We are actually able to feel his presence. Now we understand our faith is not based on feelings, but it sure is nice to have some feelings to match every now and then, ain't it? And understand, I don't feel God's presence every day or every time I pray. Uh, I know he's with me all the time. I don't need to feel him to know that he's with me. But there are times when I feel his presence and it's wonderful. So there are three reasons, if you're taking notes this morning, three reasons why we are allowed to experience God's presence. Three reasons that he would allow us to feel his presence. The first one is for fellowship. Fellowship. God allows us to feel his presence so we can feel close to him. He wants you to have a friendship with him. He, he's not the God to be without of range. He's not the God that, that we could never, that we would have to approach in fear. We should have reverence, yes, but we should be uh, in a relationship with him that we want to go to him and he allows us to feel his presence to uh, let us know that he wants that closeness, that intimacy with him. One moment in God's presence gives you a desire for one moment more. There is nothing that compares to it. How would I describe it? For me, sometimes it's electric and powerful. Sometimes it's just peaceful and joyful. Sometimes it's just reassuring and confirming. I know that every drug and every alcoholic drink that Satan has developed is nothing more than a mere attempt to duplicate God's presence. I love to see people who used to get strung out on drugs, start feeling God's presence. <laughs> you can't contain it. I know how it is to have a, a high. I know how it is to be drunk out of my mind. And I, I know all that that comes with that. But the times that I have spent in God's presence, where his, his spirit is poured out on me, it does not, Anything Satan offers cannot compare to that. Ephesians says, don't get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Debauchery, excuse me. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. If you say, well, Pastor, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, God wants you to. He wants you to be filled with his presence. He wants you to experience his touch in your life. God allows us to experience a small portion of his presence. We can't handle his full glory on this earth. 
but he allows us just to experience a small part. The scripture says that there's coming a day when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess Jesus is Lord. God is not going to make people bow. It is going to be the response of his glory. Just a small part. Our flesh really cannot handle his glory. He allows us to experience it in small doses. Psalm 63 says, You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you. In a dry and parched land where there is no water, I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. I am so thankful for Move Church. I'm so thankful that we are a church that allows God's presence to come and have his way. He is the boss. I could not handle it if we had some formality that did not allow God to move. Now, God can move in any situation at any time he wants, but I'm sure glad we welcome him, don't you? I just wish God would show up in some places that are so structured that he just comes and just knocks everybody out. Wouldn't that sort of be neat? <laughs> I believe that and God has put it in our church's name, Move Church, not because we've moved a few times, <laughs> but we're believing for a move of God. We have experienced, I believe, waves of his move, but I think there's coming a move of God that's going to touch the nations Again, and I want to be a part of that, don't you? And we have the address for revival. God showed me that in a series we've done here in the summer, I believe, about revival. And I was thinking about the verse that we normally, preachers normally preach from. In Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins and heal their land. That's a revival. And as I was using that verse, thinking about that verse for that series, God says, that is your church address. And I said, what? And then it hit me. Our church address is 2714 Highway 468. Second Chronicles 714. We're going to see revival, y'all. And we're going to see a move of God that's going to be wonderful. And it's about his presence. His presence is the answer to everything you need in your life. Well, Pastor, I've been a little depressed. Get in his presence. Well, Pastor, I'm having a hard time being joyful. Get in his presence. The Bible says in his presence is fullness of joy. Well, I need a healing touch. Get in his presence. Be like the little lady with an issue of blood who knew that she just had to touch the hem of his garment. Get in his presence. You are welcome there. His presence in the Old Testament was only for the high priest, and they had to be very careful to enter in one time a year. But Jesus, when he said it was finished on the cross, tore the curtain that separated us from the holy of holies. He tore it from top to bottom. The invitation is there. You can come into the presence of the Lord. And I'm feeling him now. I'm so thankful that he allows us to feel his presence. Not that we have to every time, and it doesn't mean if we don't feel him, he's not moving, but it's sure glad that we experience it. Can I hear a good amen from somebody that knows what I'm talking about? Amen. So begin with your prayer time before the Lord, seeking him with thanksgiving and praise. We're going to talk about that. Another reason that we are able to feel God's presence is confirmation, that God allows us to know when something pleases him or we're moving in a direction that he wants us to go. In the Acts chapter 4, Peter and John were arrested for preaching the gospel, and they were told by the chief priest and the elders, the same that had Jesus crucified, they were told, you will speak no longer in that name. 
And this is the way they respond in Acts 4. It says, but Peter and John replied, what is right in God's eyes? To listen to you or to him? You be the judges. As for us, we cannot help speaking about what we've seen and heard. So after the scripture says, after four further threats, they were released. They went back to the other disciples, told them what happened. And then they prayed. It said, Acts 4.31, they prayed for God to give them even more boldness to proclaim his name. And Acts 4.31 says, after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. That God showed up on the scene to let them know, hey, you're doing okay. I have you covered. Don't we need that sometimes? That we just know, God, you have it. Your presence is letting me know. Have you ever been in a situation where it was just chaos or you didn't know the answer and you just spent time talking with the Lord and then a peace rushed over your soul and you didn't know how it was going to change or, or how it was going to work out, but you just knew it was? Have you experienced that? That's his presence for confirmation. He allows us to feel him just to let us know, hey, I have you, I have you covered. And then another reason that we may feel God's presence is for ministry. There are times when God will anoint you to minister to someone and you will know that he is there with you, giving you the words to say, giving you the uh, ability to say it. I remember being in Guatemala, I've shared this uh, recently, but being in Guatemala on a mission trip a few uh, years ago, and I was told before the service, the pastor told me, now don't expect an altar time. They're just, this is not their culture. Uh, so uh, if you ask people to come forward, don't be disappointed if only one or two may come forward. And I said, oh, look, I'm here to flow. I'm, I'm good either way. It's, it's good. And But during praise and worship, as I was worshiping the Lord, the Lord said, watch me. And I knew. God was going to do something. And during the preaching of the message, it was a faith message. And, and uh, when I gave the time for the altar call from this side of the, or that side, you know, the left side of the, of the sanctuary to the right side, people filled the front. And God began to move and touch lives. I believe there were callings given that changed lives. And that was all the Lord. He anoints us for ministry. Isn't that so good? That God would move through us to anoint us. The Bible says we have this treasure in jars of clay. The treasure of the anointing of the Holy Ghost, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, dwells in us. And he anoints us for ministry. Isn't that very humbling, and isn't that a great privilege? So he anoints us for ministry. So there's, those are just some reasons that we're allowed to feel God's presence. So when we, it, when we praise God, when we give thanksgiving, it puts us on a pathway to experience God's presence. When thanksgiving, I'll cover praise first, but let me give you this if you're taking notes. Thanksgiving is the gate and praise is the front door. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. The Bible says enter his courts with praise. That as we're giving him thanksgiving, we're drawn into praise. And as we're praising God, we're drawn into God's presence. Your thanksgiving is the gate and the praise, your praise is the front door to his presence. So where thanksgiving, we're going to talk about praise first, where thanksgiving focuses on God's goodness, praise focuses on God's greatness. Thanksgiving is God's goodness, what he's done for you. Praise is his greatness. There are three principles of praise I want to give you uh, this morning. If you want to experience God's presence, you must be a praiser. Learn to pray. Well, brother, I just don't believe in making any kind of, of expression. God knows my heart. Well, it's amazing that when you get in an argument with your spouse, you're pretty expressive. 
or when it comes to your favorite football team or the sale at the mall, you're pretty expressive. Come on now. It's a church. I could preach a little bit, right? Why is it so hard for us to be expressive to the Lord? Why, why, well, he doesn't need all of that. He sees my heart. Yes, he does see your heart, but he loves it too when we express it to him. Too many examples in the Bible where praise is expressed. Yes, it's not worth anything if it doesn't begin in your heart at first. Jesus said, they, they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. But if it's in your heart, what I found out, it's going to come out through your actions and your words. Because by the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So when it's in our heart, we should be expressive in our worship and a praise to the Lord. So three principles. Number one, God will be praised. If we don't praise him, Jesus said the very rocks will cry out. He will be praised. All creation praises the Lord. We were created to praise the Lord. Revelation says, Then I heard every creature in heaven, look at this, and on earth and under the earth. Is he talking about hell? I really believe so. I believe they have to praise the Lord. And on the sea and all that is in them saying to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb be praised and honor and glory and power forever and ever. All creation is lifting up praise and worship to the Lord. Well, I just don't like all the noise up in the church. Well, you don't go to heaven then. Because heaven's going to be loud with praises to the lamb. Lifting him up, worshiping him, giving him praise. We were created to do so. The angels in heaven praise the Lord. The 24 elders that surround God's throne praise the Lord. The heavenly beasts surrounding God's throne praise the Lord. Everyone who goes to heaven will sing with one voice, praising the Lord. Heaven is loud with the praises to the Lord. Psalms 150 says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So you are excused if you're dead. I ain't going to go nowhere else but that. So another principle, God desires our praise. Now that's very interesting, ain't it? That with all of this praise that he has, he desires the praise of mankind. There is nothing more spiritual that we can do than to give praises to the Lord. I really felt in my spirit that when Abigail was singing, that we were joining in that very powerful but a simple song. I felt in, in my spirit that the angels in heaven were being quietened so they could so God can hear our praises. And I believe the angels begin to sing the same song. I believe God desires our praises so much that when we lift it up with a pure heart, it gets his attention. Praise is the way we express our love, our honor, our admiration, our appreciation to the Lord. First Peter, it says, listen to this. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. That he takes delight in your praises. He chose us to show us his love and grace and mercy, and he desires for us to show our love, appreciation, and devotion back to him. The scripture says he is a jealous God. He don't want nothing to steal his praises. He wants you praising him, and don't we have a reason to? And he delights in our praises. Then number three, 
God responds when we praise. There's so many examples in the Bible that when God shows up, when his people begin to praise. I mean, it's sort of like a, a, a proud father or a mother that when your child begins to brag on you a little bit, I mean, you'll just sort of, you just want to go over the top then with it. I mean, if Nick starts complimenting me about something, I'm like, my head starts getting real big and he knows if he says the right things, I'll just give him whatever he wants then. Don't, don't we really like that. And your father, God, when you begin to magnify him and praise him, he wants to show you that he is pleased with that. And he will show you a response. You know, the Bible says that faith, without faith, we can't please him. For if we come to him, we must believe that he exists and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He doesn't just want you to believe he's a, he's a mighty God. He wants you to believe he's a mighty God on your behalf. And when you begin to declare his praises, God, you are awesome. You are magnificent. You've always cared for me. You'll always care for me. You love me more than I can know. God begins to say, let me show you. Yeah, you're right. Let me show you. I will reward your seeking me, your praises to me. So one of my favorite examples of the Bible is when Paul and Silas was preaching the gospel and, and they set demons out of a slave girl and they got uh, in trouble for that, for, for doing something good. They were put in prison and the scripture, you're probably familiar with this if you've been in church more than a few weeks, Acts 16 says about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to the Lord. Now they're beaten for doing good and they're not pity mouthing, uh, uh, you know, down or in, in their mouth. They're, they start praying and singing to the Lord. I don't know what song they were singing, but I wish I had. I wish I knew what that song was. And they were singing, and it says, uh, and the other prisoners were listening to them. It's like, man, what are they happy about? What are they praising about? Then it says, suddenly there was such a violent earthquake quake, that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And all at once, uh, at once all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. Now, I've preached this, this from this verse in prison. They get real happy at this point right here. And they're ready to praise then. And, uh, but our praise, what, what, what a, uh, a, a lesson for us that our praise, God uses our praise. He, the Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. That is, when we begin to praise him, he begins to move and other people are affected by his moving, his presence. You would think that only Paul uh, and, and Silas's chains fell off, would have fallen off. They were the ones praising, but it said everyone's chains fell off. That's the reason at church we spend time giving uh, praise and worship to the Lord. We want his presence to show up. See, I understand. If his presence does not show up, I can just give you a couple of little encouragements and you can go home and, uh, and it won't be more than just the words that you've heard. But when God's presence shows up, everything changes. He will heal. He will can deliver. He can give direction. He can give a calling all in one moment, he knows exactly what you need. I'm amazed at what preachers get credited for saying, and some of the things I know I didn't say, it was the Holy Spirit that said it. He knows what you need, and when he shows up, he can distribute all of his giftings. He can distribute healing. He can do whatever he wants. We just got to have his presence show up. Move, church. Let's never forget, we got to have his presence. We're desperate for him, desperate for his touch. We're desperate for him to show up. We're desperate for him to move in our lives. I will. Thank you, brother. It says everyone's chains came loose. Even people who didn't know how their chains would fall 
didn't know that there would be anything to hope for. <clears throat> they didn't know the gospel. They didn't know the, what, what the, the joy was, the God that they were singing about. And it said their chains fell off. And if you read that <clears throat> story, nobody left. Even the prisoners, that their chains fell off. They did not leave. They were in awe of God's presence. So his presence responds and other people are touched. When God responds to our praise, other people benefit. So we praise God with singing. <clears throat> we praise God with clapping. We praise God with shouting. We praise God with our words and actions. We praise God when things are good. We praise God when things don't look so good. We praise God for all that he has done for us and all that he will do for us. We praise him because he's worthy of all praise and honor and glory and power. We praise him. If I had a Pentecostal church, a few of you would have stood up and started dancing. I'm trying to put the cap on the mic. I love God's presence. I have to be very careful. Uh, sometimes I get lost in worship, so sometimes when I come up to preach, it takes me a little bit to get come back to you because I was with the Lord. And I have to be very careful because it will be hard for me to know my name at times. And I love being caught up in his presence. I know the benefit of being with him. And it's available for all. It's available for everyone that has Christ in their life. He wants to invite you in, fellowship with you. Jesus said, I'm knocking at the door. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and fellowship with you and you with me. He wants you to know when he walks in the room. He wants you to have that sensitivity in your spirit to know, oh, I know you're always with me, but God, your manifest presence just showed up. And I know something's fixing to happen. That's not just for the preacher or the evangelist. That's for the believer who will seek him and spend time in his presence. And it comes when we have thanksgiving and praise. Now let's look at thanksgiving. First Thessalonians says, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. This is God's will for us to be thankful. Being a thankful person is a person that has gratitude in their heart. An attitude of thankfulness positions us in the direction of God's presence. God is not impressed with your resume. He's not, he's not flustered because of all the great knowledge that you have. Even the great works. The scripture says all is by him, through him, and for him. And the person who is humble enough to say, I thank you, Lord. I don't deserve. I don't deserve anything other than bad. I thank you. Let me give you traits of thankful people. From what I've experienced, these are some traits. Thankful people are positive people. They know how to find good in what they have. And the people like that get on the nerves of negative people. They focus on what they have more than what they don't have. Maybe this is a good season for us to learn to apply this to every season in all circumstances. I'm going to start looking at what I have. Thankful people are positive people. Thankful people are joyful people. Because they focus on the positive instead of the negatives, they are happier. They're not waiting for something 
to happen to make them happy. They're thankful for what they have. And they're thankful that God has provided for them and will continue. So they are a joyful people. Paul, who went through so much that it's just amazing, and look at what he said. Rejoice in the Lord always. In other words, be joyful. I say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. He said, don't go to God, just say, I need this, I need this, I need this. He said, God, yes, I need this. These are my prayer and my, my petitions, but I thank you that I know you will do this because you have done so much for me. God, you have provided for me. You have healed my body. You have been always there with me. God, I thank you. You are a good God. You are a mighty God. And, Lord, I thank you that this will be taken care of. And the Scripture says the peace of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And the last one I'm going to hurry, thankful people are content people. Ooh, that word content. Content doesn't mean to settle. It doesn't mean to not have hope for. Content means that I know God has done this, and I am thankful he sustains me, and because he sustains me, he'll sustain me then also. He brought me here. He's not going to uh, mislead me. He's not going to let me down. If he delivered me from the pit, he will deliver me from this problem. I'm thankful, and I'm content. God is my God. And this is Philippians 4. Let me read it. He says, I, Paul said, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. Whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. You see, that contentment is knowing that God is with me. And whatever he, I, I'm allowed to go through, he is right there with me to help me through it. That contentment is a dependency on the Lord. So let me close real briefly. Man, my, where did my time go? How to be thankful. How to be thankful. Let me give it to you if you'll write these down. First one is this. Recognize your dependence on God. Recognize your dependence on God. It's the first step to being thankful. It's acknowledging that you are insufficient within yourself. When it comes to God, we're totally dependent on him. Our next breath, our next heartbeat. If he doesn't give it, you don't have it. Dependent. I can do nothing without him, but with him I can do everything. He said, Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. You can't read the word unless the Spirit puts it in your heart to read the word. You can't worship unless the Spirit draws you. Anything good that's in you is because he is good in you. That's all of us. Realize your dependence. Recognize, number two, realize what you've been given by God. If you don't know how to count your blessings, you need to start. Especially when you're going through a hard time, start counting your blessing. What God has done for you. Scripture says every good and perfect gift is from above. Coming down from the Father. If it ain't good, he ain't done with it yet. Either he ain't done with it or you ain't done with it. Sometimes it's us, ain't it? But if it ain't good, he ain't done. Amen. And Romans says, for everything comes from him and exists by his power and is intended for his glory. All glory to him forever. Then number three, it's so important, we got to rest in the goodness of God. Rest in his goodness. If 
what you have um, is not what you're desiring, understand the same God that brought you where you are will get you to where he wants you to be. One of my favorite psalms is this, return to your rest. Let me say it like I memorized it. Be at rest once again, O my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. Quiet down, quit worrying, soul. You're taking authority over your soul. The psalmist is saying, wait, wait a minute. Soul, be at rest. Why are you worrying? Why are you fretting? Why are you fearing? You be at rest. Once again, you got to know, you got to understand this. The Lord has been good. Would you stand, please? Thank you, Jesus. When we thank the Lord, it just draws us to his presence. Thanking him is declaring his goodness. If you don't begin your prayer time with enough time being thankful first, you're, you're selling yourself short of being in God's presence. Your prayer time is more formal. So it's, it's more religious. But if you'll just start first saying, God, let me just thank you. Thank you for today. Thank you. I'm in my right mind, at least halfway there. Anyway, Lord, thank you. Thank you for breath to breathe. Thank you, Lord, how you awaken me again with your presence. You've forgiven me. And you just start spending some time being thankful. Thanking him for his goodness. Before you know it, you'll go right into praise. Thanking him for his goodness, you then begin to start declaring his greatness. You are a great God. There is none like you. The Holy Spirit will kick in and he'll help you to even make it better than what you're able to do. He'll start giving you the words to say, declaring God's greatness. And before you know it, you'll start feeling yourself drawn into God's presence. Maybe, maybe you'll feel it. Maybe you won't. But the scripture says you will be in his courts when you begin to praise him. You'll know you have his attention. This verse, I don't have it in my notes, but I believe God gave it to me as I was studying yesterday. <clears throat> and this is, I really believe, I want someone to grab hold of this. I know I've had to before. Psalms 27 is such an amazing psalms. And it closes it out by saying, I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I am confident. I'm going to see God show up right now in my life, in this situation. Then he says, wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Now I want you to bow your head, please. And if that's your verse, you're going to grab a hold of that today. Would you raise your hand? That's my verse. I'm grabbing that one today. I need that one today. I'm confident of this. I'm going to see God's goodness in my life, in this land of the living. And I'm going to wait on it. I'm going to be strong and take heart. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to thank him. I'm going to be strong and take heart, and I'm going to wait on the Lord. Thank you, Lord. You see hands that are saying, that's me for today. That's my faith seed today, and I'm going to plant that. I'm going to plant that. Some of us need to help being more thankful. We've been more focused on our problems than on God's goodness. And if that's you, I want you to just lift up a hand and ask the Lord to forgive you. Lord, forgive me for that. I should be more thankful. You've done so much for me. And Lord, I want you to help me to see all the good things you've done. And my focus is on you now. And I'm going to be, I'm going to be thankful. And Lord, I'm going to praise you better. I'm going to be more vocal in my praise. I'm not letting the devil steal my praise. Lord, I thank you. If there's sin in your life, let's go ahead and take care of it. Church, if you're watching online, you say, well, there's some sin in my life. And sin will keep you from being thankful. Sin will take the power out of your praise. And it's time to deal with that. You want to be close to the Lord. You want his presence. So we're going to pray like we always do. If you need to repent.
Now is the time. Church, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me so much that you gave your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for my sins. I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. Would you forgive me for all my sins? Would you come into my heart? Would you change my life? And I'm going to do my best to live for you in Jesus' name. If you just prayed that prayer and this is the first time you prayed it, or you have made a commitment to the Lord a long time, you've been serving Him faithfully, let's all thank Him for our salvation. Let's thank Him. Would you raise a hand and just thank Him? Thank you, Lord. You forgave me. I'm so thankful, Lord, you didn't leave me where I was, but you came after me. You showed me your love. I'm so thankful to be forgiven today. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. I can praise with the angels in heaven. I can lift up praise to you, and you will receive it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I saw on the news this week, Taylor Swift, I couldn't tell you a song that she sings, I could care less, but she announced her tour and Ticketmaster crashed because of so many people trying to buy tickets and the news had people crying, I didn't get my Taylor Swift tickets. And I was like, and I told Patty, I, I, we were talking about it, we were watching the news, I was like, this is just music. This is just a song. Song. I can tell you what her songs are. I could care less. But this is just somebody that sings. This is her contribution to society. And if you are a Swifty, I'm sorry. I don't know about that. But at the same time, it speaks to the power of music. It speaks to what God created to give Him praise. See, we're going to praise something. You're either going to praise Taylor Swift for her contribution, or you're going to praise a mighty God, the creator of all things. And the good thing about it, we don't have to go to Ticketmaster and pay hundreds of dollars to get an audience with Him. We could go straight into his presence, the creator of all things, and have communion with him. I'll choose that one any day. Amen. Amen. It's been good to be in the house today. I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Can you believe that's Thursday? And then next Sunday, come with give thanks. You say, well, Pastor, I don't know if I can do any of that. Come and just be around people and be a cheerleader. You will enjoy it. You ride it with the team. And it's just going to be a fun Sunday. It's going to be, we might going to have regular service in here. So it'll be from 9 until 1 o'clock. All the projects will be through by 1 o'clock. And we believe that God's going to give us divine appointments with people as we minister. We're going to be His hands and feet. And we're going to give people reason to give thanks and hopefully give their hearts to Jesus. Amen. Isn't that going to be wonderful? It's going to be a lot of fun. So make plans. Sign up before you leave. Uh, let me bless you. Uh, before you leave this house, the Lord, raise your hand if you will receive this blessing from the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Give them peace, Lord, as they go in your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great Sunday. Thank you so much for joining us today. Let's do our part by sharing this video so not only us, but everyone can see. And let's have a great rest of our day.